You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now. And topping the list, a deadly crash closing a stretch of Magnolia Avenue. It launched a search with one person reportedly involved, still not found. The frightening intensity of the wreck shown in the form of a car left sticking out the brick wall of one building nearby. Another car left sideways in the road, the front end twisted and smashed, an SUV with a window broken, sitting at a skewed angle, plus car parts thrown here and there. All this in the 2800 block near Milligan Street. Now, a witness sharing what he saw in the moments before the collision. I saw these two cars flying down the road. Uh, I'm pretty sure the orange one hydroplaned, and I'm I thought they were racing. I, I heard a few odd pops. I thought it was the exhaust, and then I saw the red one slam into the side of the Explorer, and so I hopped on the phone with the police immediately. It was probably not even like 30 seconds that, that it all happened. Again, one person was killed. Police said multiple people were taken to the hospital for what's being described as severe injuries. Originally, police said that two people left the scene of the crash, and at last update, police managed to find one of those two. One of those two. Now, officers say they do not believe the second person is dangerous. Now, Knoxville police closing down Magnolia Avenue to investigate the crash. You're looking at a live picture right now. Uh, street cleaning crews have been out. You can see the street sweeper going by on the far side of that badly damaged vehicle, what's left of that car. Again, this is along Magnolia. Probably a sign that they are close to moving the wreckage and reopening this section of Magnolia. Still have some work to do. Of course, we'll continue to monitor it and keep you posted. But crews, it looks like in those final stages now, just cleaning up, waiting to reopen the roadway. Of course, we'll get more details and pass it along to you. All right, next on our big seven list for you, fallout from the death of a death row inmate. Could it now have a bearing on someone else's case? It's a question our legal analyst is answering for us tonight. As we've been telling you, 71-year-old James Dellinger was not executed. Instead, the state is saying he died of apparent natural causes after spending decades on death row. We have been following this case since the 90s. Dellinger, along with his nephew, Gary Sutton, were tried for the murders of two Blunt County siblings. And all these years later, Sutton maintains his innocence. And we brought the case to attorney Greg Isaacs for answers. Does the death of his co-defendant uh, uncle uh, impact his case legally? Uh, no. Uh, does it draw attention for people like you and I to talk about it and to bring it back on the governor's radar? Um, absolutely. If you're his lawyer, what you want to do is get the uh, governor's attention, get the parole board's attention, and you know ask for a commutation. Sutton's attorney looking forward to continuing to make the case to the state. Last year, the state Supreme Court set a date for Sutton's execution, which has since come and gone as Tennessee's lethal injection process has been tangled up in legal and procedural problems. Currently, there is no set execution date for Sutton, and we are told the scheduling will likely be delayed due to the Tennessee Supreme Court making changes to the state's execution protocol. Of course, we will keep you posted. All right, moving down the Big 7 list for us tonight, two teens from New York were just arrested right here in Knoxville and faced attempted murder charges tonight. Uh, the man they allegedly shot toward told police he spotted them trying to break into a car in the parking lot of this apartment complex located on East Magnolia Avenue. That's when the victim says they shot at him and drove off. Fortunately, the man was not hit by the gunfire, and his description of the car, a white Kia, helped police track the suspects down within minutes. Now, the car was spotted by a police license plate scanner, and officers chased the car until it crashed on I-40. This happened near Asheville Highway. Knoxville police say the teens tried to run, but with the help of a canine officer, police were quickly able to bring them into custody. Suspects of both 15 years of age have been charged with attempted second-degree murder, and we're told additional charges are pending. Next now, at the 7, Republicans taking control in the U.S. House. Tennessee Congressman Chuck Fleischman just, uh, just uh, was named the chair of the House Appropriations Energy and Water Development Subcommittee. Now, that's fitting for the man responsible for representing Oak Ridge, known for its science and energy efforts. Fleischman, who has served on the subcommittee for a decade now, will be responsible for calling hearings and introducing legislation involving the nation's long-term energy security and national security. He specifically told us he hopes to advance important initiatives like modernizing our nation's nuclear stockpile and advancing groundbreaking nuclear fusion research, initiatives that broadly have support from both sides of the aisle. 
energy and water, we get along famously well. Republicans and Democrats working to fund key initiatives, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, the Y-12 security plant, the uranium processing facility, and perhaps what I'm best known for, the large nuclear cleanup mission um, in an environmental sense, we're cleaning up legacy waste in Oak Ridge and all over the country. In the southern part of our district, that means funding for the water projects such as the Chickamauga Lock. So it's a coveted slot, it's an important slot, and it's one of the less contentious subcommittees. Representative Fleischman also tells us he will work to cut what he calls wasteful government spending and make sure every dollar of tax money is responsibly allocated. Staying in Washington for a moment, Congressman Tim Burchett has returned to the House Committee on Transportation and Infrastructure for the 118th Congress. Burchett served on this committee in the previous Congress. The Tennessee Republican saying, quote, I'm excited to continue representing Tennessee's values as we work on modernizing our critical infrastructure without breaking the bank, end quote. Well, three volunteer firefighters are under investigation for potential arson after a recent fire. According to Kentucky State Police, the fire happened on Balkan Road in Pineville last June. The Bell County Volunteer Fire Department responded to the scene shortly after the fire started and extinguished the flames. When detectives investigated the cause, they determined it was purposely set by these three firefighters, Jacob Hobbs, Andrew Johnson, and an unnamed juvenile. All three have now been charged with arson in the third degree. Hobbs and Johnson were arraigned on those charges today in General Sessions Court and released on bond. The juvenile was placed in the Breathitt County Juvenile Detention Center. Well, our next big story, the end of a search for a missing man. Morgan County Sheriff's Office says 29-year-old Matthew Jordan, uh, Matthew Jordan Hall has been found dead. Now, Hall was reported missing last week. He was last seen on January 7th at the Mountaintop Bar and Grill in Rockwood. According to the Morgan County Sheriff's Office, he was found dead on January 13th. We are told Hall's death and disappearance are under investigation. Of course, we will keep you updated as we learn more. Our next Big 7 and 7 story, the Diocese of Knoxville, says Cardinal Justin Regali has now been hospitalized following what is being called an apparent heart-related issue. The church says the 87-year-old is now awake, alert, and resting comfortably after what happened yesterday. Cardinal Regali's career with the church reaches back to the 1960s. He has been all over the world, but now lives right here in Knoxville. The diocese says he will remain hospitalized while tests are conducted.